Greetings, this is Obi-Wan Kenobi, and I have drifted into the underworld. The Star Wars underworld. I have a bad feeling about this. Here we go. We must go to the lower levels. The underworld. You've taken your first step into a larger world. You're after something. Ben. Since I've started the underworld, I've met so many great friends. Chris. I grew up in the 1990s, and mall packaging is nostalgic for me. Dominic. What I love most about Star Wars is that it's fun, and it's all round good times. So, this is where the fun begins. May the Force be with us. This thing really moves! Woo! I like this! I can't believe you came all this way to see me. What's up, Star Wars fans, and welcome back to another episode of the Star Wars Underworld Podcast. We are your source for the latest breaking Star Wars news and discussion each and every week. And this week on the show, we have so much Disney Plus series news to get to. We've got a big update about the book of Boba Fett. We've got a big update about the Kenobi show. Some updates as well about the Mandalorian and Andor. Uh, and we might be getting a George Lucas action figure as well. All that and so much more news on this episode of the Star Wars Unroll Podcast. My name is Chris. Joining me as he always does, it's the founder of the Star Wars Unroll, Ben Hart, the Star Wars guy. Hello, governor. It's jolly good time oh. for the Hamlet oh, podcast. No. And, uh, <laughs> so oh, God. I'm, I'm sorry. This thing is dangerous. This re- really is. It's bad. Oh, okay. I'm dear. sorry. I won't, I won't let that happen oh, again. Wow. Oh, that God. was so That's jarring. Wow. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I apologize. I apologize. That was, that was not a thing. I will, I will be careful oh. with that thing from now on, okay? It does things to my head. I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, so let me start over. Um, oh, hey guys, how's it going? Um, yes, we have a mountain of Star Wars news because actually we've been holding off on a lot of it no. for the past few weeks because we've been having so many other things to talk about. But now we can actually talk about it tonight. And and we have a wonderful co-host with us tonight that I'll let you go ahead and introduce. That's right. Uh, as you guys can see, uh, Dominic is not here. He is at the Boot to Eve Classic currently. He uh, better not be yes. rooting for Savola. That would be oh, not better not. That kind no. Of yeah, seriously. No. Um, but he'll be back next week. But we've got a very capable fill in who uh, we're not sure if uh, it's not just an altered ego of Dominic either, because very rarely do we see them Maybe. in the same place uh, from the Star Wars <laughs> Culture podcast. It's Hannah Changeling. Rayside. Hey, Anna, how you doing? <laughs> Hello. Thank you so much for having me on. And yes, I'm getting very suspicious now. I think me and Dom are just the same person. We're just one of those changelings like Zam Wessel that we just we just change <laughs> faces when we need to be. No, but no, it's such a pleasure to be on here. I can't wait to get into yet yeah, the mountain of Star Wars news that we have to talk about. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. They yeah. both suspiciously wear blue baseball hats. So do, you know, actually. there's something about that. <laughs> theory someone's not mm. a conspiracy theory on twitter oh about my oh. god okay oh goodness okay real quick let's get to the plugs um yes. so uh first of all we are very very close to 1000 subscribers on youtube so if you have not already go over and subscribe you'll get notified when we go live you'll get all of the other videos that we put out which is not very many right now but we're we're producing some very cool content that you guys are definitely want to keep in contact with uh we are part of this culture slate network um of course star wars culture which hannah is on along with jordan Mm -hmm. and we got uh chatter squadron and the rollout all great podcasts definitely go check those out um on their respective times um you can support us on patreon at patreon.com slash vs WU, you get the pre-show for a, as low as one dollar a month. Come on, you can find that in your couch. All right, oh, just yeah, it's, it's no big deal. It's, it's somewhere, yeah, yeah. So you get the pre-show, you get a bunch of other stuff, and uh, you get to let because we talk for like thirty minutes before we even get on this main show, and you get to. And sometimes it's really good. Sometimes it's us trying to figure <laughs> out um, if people's cameras are working correctly. Um, that just happens <laughs> sometimes. Um, but either way, it's entertaining. Um, you can buy merch at tpublic.com slash user slash the Star Wars Underworld. We've got 
a few things left. I don't know. I maybe a few things left. They keep copyright striking us and taking away our stuff. But I'm sure there's something over there. SW logo shirt, Radio Razor Crest, you name it, it's over there. You can send us uh, feedback at swunderworld at gmail.com. We've got a load of listener feedback. I don't know if we're gonna get to any tonight, but we're gonna have to have like a full on. Um, just listener feedback episode to catch up yes. on everything because you guys send mm-hmm. some amazing emails at, as always. Um, and it's, of course, be sure to subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, everywhere else. Leave a review. It really does help the show. And, uh, you know, because there is some not so great reviews. So a five star review would be fantastic because uh, some of you weren't very nice. I'm just sitting looking that way. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I think that's it. Um, IP uh, for hi Ben. Uh, what's going on with IPC? I don't know. Um, <laughs> um, so we had an episode we were going to do this week um, with Chad, our producer. Um, we're pushing it to next week. We're going to be talking about Superman and Lois, which is one of my favorite new, new TV shows. So that should be a lot of fun. But stick around for that. And that is all the plugs. Well, I wanted to ask you. I wanted to ask you about something, something else, because. Oh. Um, there, there's, a, there's a lot of um, podcast names that have been missing E's lately. <laughs> What's up with that? <laughs> um, that's a secret. Ooh. That's a secret. Ooh, oh, a secret. I forgot to I forgot to plug my secret project. Mm. It's coming <laughs> very soon. Yeah, something there's... that mm. I have been working on for a little while now. Um, something I've had in my head for literally years. Um, and I think you guys are going to enjoy it. It could be the best or worst thing I've ever done in my life. Um, we, we'll find out together. Um, so let's do it. So, so take, so just keep an eye out for that. I, I will reveal more details very, very soon. Wink, wink. Super Ooh. excited for that. All right, let's get to this cornucopia of Disney Plus <laughs> series news. And uh, I didn't mention this off the top of the show, but it's we should definitely mention it now before we get to some of that other stuff. A uh, big Star Wars Visions news this week. Uh, CNET put out an article. They were talking to uh, the producers of the show, producer Kanako Shirasaki and executive producer James Waugh. And um, uh, they were asked um, a few questions. Um, so one of them was what made you decide to release all nine episodes on the same day? That's a very good question. Yeah, um, exactly. That we've been asking ourselves. Um, and Waugh responded, it felt right for an anthology since each of these shorts is 13 to 20 minutes. We felt that part of the story here is anthology and the aggregate of these different tones and styles of anime. So it sounds like they kind of wanted people to digest it together as one thing, which I kind of see, because if you just get one episode, you don't get a full feel for the tone of the whole series because everything's so different. So maybe they didn't want people judging it based on just the first episode or two. Yeah, I think we avoided a lot of really annoying discourse because, mm. you know, it would have been like, it would have been fun, like watching The Duel, like digesting that one episode for one week would have been great. But then you would have got to, you know, T01B, uh, yeah. T- uh, Toby, <laughs> and, and people would have been like, yeah, this is awesome. And I'd be like, it's filler and all that kind of stuff. And that mm. would have been annoying. I think. It was such a positive experience just watching people react because everyone was picking out their favorite episode and going like, this is great. This is the, the ninth Jedi. This is fantastic. Um, and it was great mm-hmm. to see that versus, you know, week per week. It is fun to kind of like watch each episode. I would have loved to like spent a week just watching one episode. But uh, I think what we got and, and they have every reason to, you know, do what they did. I think they knew what they had. Mm, absolutely. And I, I actually agree with you there, Ben. I feel like, um, you know the way they gave it to it to us all in one hit. It, it we didn't have we didn't really have a need to digest. Um, you, you know even those bigger ones that people were loving. I think yeah because we weren't getting a follow up episode the next week of the same show. It's like oh there's no time for that to sink in, kind of thing. So yeah I think all in one hit was the best method for this style. Like doing an anthology, it's all uncanon. Just hey, enjoy this all at once, you know, like a buffet. Just, like, get in right. there. You can eat whatever thing you want. Um, yeah, I think it really works, though. I really enjoyed it, how it was just one hit. It's great as, you know, podcasters and people, you know, we talk every week about Star Wars. It's great to have something come out every week because it drags out the discussion for months. Mm. But yeah. it also, there, there are some negative sides to that, which is 
it's hard to look at the whole thing as a whole and seeing just a piece of something. Sometimes you just don't understand what's going on fully until it's over. So, you know, we've had a lot of trouble, you know, reviewing Star Wars shows because once we get a whole season or a whole series, you can kind of tell what it is and why they did certain things. But when you're watching it episode by episode, mm -hmm. sometimes it doesn't make sense. Sometimes you feel like they're going off in some weird direction and you're like, why are they showing this character now or doing this plot line now? And it does not make sense till it comes back later, maybe even in another season. So that's something that we didn't have that problem with Visions. We just watched this whole thing. We could digest it as a whole thing. Um, but that also had to do with the fact that it's not an episodic uh, series. It's, it's, it's an anthology. So I don't even know if we would have had that problem anyway. Um, yeah. So continuing to mm -hmm. talk about it, um, Cena asked um, Shirasaki, could elements from Visions be brought into canon? Some episodes feel like they should slot into the existing continuity pretty smoothly. That's a big question we've been asking ourselves. What does this mean for Star Wars canon? Um, and uh, Shirasaki said, not immediately, but it might influence the next generation of creators. And then uh, Wa came in and added, that's right, every piece of Star Wars influences future Star Wars storytellers in some form or the other. So there uh, are there plans to integrate visions into the timeline uh, saga storytelling? No, not currently, but I have no doubt that we will see things that were in visions become part of the fabric of Star Wars over the next decade. So that that's mm. that's an yeah. that's an interesting take on it because you know even if something isn't officially canon, like we might not see a certain character or group or planet or situation in future Star Wars stories or referenced in future Star Wars stories. Some of the concepts and themes that we got and maybe some of the visuals that we got and storytelling elements that we got might be something that we might see again in Star Wars, just like stuff from the original trilogy has been repeated ad infinitum, which is an interesting idea because a lot of that stuff is super interesting. So it'd be great to see it explored more. Yeah, that's mm. how I'm kind of looking at it. I agree with him that, like, I feel like this is going to have a major influence on people watching this. And we've seen, you know, you know, this kind of stuff that's on streaming is so accessible. And there, I mean, there could be a kid watching Visions right now that grows up to be the next Star Wars director that, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. makes it and says, hey, the first yeah. Star Wars thing I ever watched was Star Wars Visions and it inspired me to make the movie I'm making now. Like, it could happen. It may take 20 or 30 years, but it could happen. Um, and just on the short term, like, I think this, we talked about last week, how, like, this could, this could not just inspire Lucasfilm to, like, say, hey, this kind of wacky anime stuff works on screen, but also just you know, pushing things forward and introducing new ideas and like, you know, the whole idea of like in, in the ninth Jedi, the, the Sabersmith is like, oh, well, normally speaking, like he kind of accepts the idea that normally speaking, lightsabers just have a color, but that he engineered them to have different colors for where po different people that, that hold them. Mm -hmm. So like they could potentially introduce that into canon at some point. We go post Rise of Skywalker. Who knows what could happen? Um, you know, that's one like really one of the best ideas I think in the entire Vision show. So there's so many possibilities. There's so many things that could come back in the future. Little things or big things mm. that would really be you know like you could point to Visions and go like that's where it started. Mm, mm. And I kind of saw the way that they did release them, and in each story was you know yeah there's connecting threads, but a lot of each story had a, a new idea to present and new characters and a new angle to see the galaxy in. I kind of see it as if I was someone working in Disney, a really good, like, it was almost like a survey, honestly. I feel like they could, you know, they're, they're well known for doing fan service and, you know, sometimes too much, sometimes not enough. But I think they can kind of use the reaction that Visions had as a survey of what people would be more um, receptive to into Star Wars in the future. Um, mm. You know, and like even in the discussions that, you know, everyone's having about visions on social media, you know, there's this discussions of what's your favorite, what's your least favorite. And like Disney execs look at that and they look at that, you know, the marketing of right. that and, and look at all those, you know, that feedback. And, and I think that goes back into the system of, of creators and back at, back into Disney going, okay, well this, you know, this kind of idea of 
this side of the force was really working well. I wonder what we can do with that. Can we run with that? Um, so yeah, I, I kind of saw this visions as like a, almost, yeah, like a survey. That's a good yeah. one. I think that's what I want. Yeah. Yeah, survey. it's like it's 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 like a it's like, um like a sampler basically. Yeah, like, you know, yeah. You have just all these little samples. You know, it's like going to whatever store in your country is the the sample store. Here, it's like Sam's Club <laughs> or Costco. Right, right. You and, get like a little cup of the yeah. thing, and you're like, yeah, that's yeah. What it was like for like Star the Wars. digital version of that. And you're like, oh, yeah. that's good. I don't really care Ooh. for that, but oh, this is really good. Ooh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, have some of that do, nice you, Jedi. You gotta do a loop. Stuff. <laughs> you can do a loop and like act like you haven't been there before and get it again. Right. <laughs> you just, you just oh. go back and just go. Oh yes, I would like another, please. <laughs> oh, get, get exactly, exactly. Bring, bring your top hat you're everywhere. The third Star Wars character oh. that showed up. Are you sure you're not the same guy? <laughs> <laughs> oh my word. Yeah. Well, I I, yeah. I feel like the reaction that I've heard is obviously people have had their favorites, but I hear different things from different people. And like mm -hmm. some of the episodes that some people say, I didn't like this one. I hear other people saying, I really like this one. Um, I feel the same. There's some like ones that are pretty polarizing where it's like some people really hate it. Some people really love it, but there's still people who really love it, do really love it. And so I'm mm -hmm. hoping that the feedback that they're getting is diversity. Like it, people don't want to just see the same thing over and over again. Right. They want to see different types yeah. of stories and different tones and styles and themes. And so I'm hoping that, you know, it just, you know, what we get is, just more different types of stories and that Star Wars isn't as cookie cutter as it's been and as formulaic as it's been where, you know, every episode kind of has the same, the same structure to it overall. Like want to see things kind of get a little bit more um, diverse there. Um, so mm -hmm. speaking about future of Star Wars, uh, big question was asked, can we expect another season? And Wa uh, handled that and he says, I think we'd love to do more Star Wars Visions. We'll have we'll have to assess the reaction and what fandom wants. Kanoko and I probably are incredibly biased. We love these shorts and really do think this is such a great framing for Star Wars. So mm. unfortunately, that's not, you know, that's not as strong an answer as I was hoping to get to that question. Mm. Of course, the creator of the show is going to say, I want to make more. Like that, what, what right. do you expect them to say? Right. So that doesn't really tell yeah. us a lot, unfortunately. Yeah. And it kind of sounds like something you say when you, you aren't currently making the second season. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's, yeah, that's, that's, that's the answer. Yeah. yeah we like, would love oh, yeah. to do a second season. <laughs> if you right. know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like if they're I trying mean, to hide the fact that they are making one, that's not what you would say. I feel. Right. Yeah. It, it I mean, sounds like Ooh. it's it's better yeah. than them going like, "Oh, absolutely not. We this is one that's and true. done, and that's we're true. never doing anything else. That's Star true. Wars Visions forever and ever." <laughs> um, that. You know, that's, that's what true. they could say, but they're not going to say that. Um, you know, it's good that the creators are are good for a sequel, but like, how many stories have seen? Uh, so and so wants a sequel to this, and you know, mm -hmm. sometimes most of the time, nothing ever comes of it. But I I would hope that. They're looking at like they're saying, you know, the yeah, assess the reaction. I would hope that I would think and assume that Disney and Lucasfilm are doing just that right now, looking at the numbers, looking at saying, "Hey, this is our." If if they had a, a jump in subscribers, they had a huge amount of people watching this. It would only make sense to do another season for numbers wise. Um, but I, I hope they don't just consider that. I hope they consider that this is a really great idea and not just stuff. Not just Star Wars Visions, more Star Wars Visions, but something like Visions, too. Yeah. Mm. Doc Holocron brings up something really interesting that I didn't know. Apparently, nearly every trending topic on Wikipedia right now is Visions related. So right. that, that means that at least amongst mm. people that are big enough Star Wars fans to go to Wikipedia, <laughs> um, it, <laughs> right. it's something that's, that, that's really popular right now. And I mean, I got that feeling from social media. Everybody I knew who was on social media who liked Star Wars was talking about visions. Um, so mm -hmm. I, I have a feeling that just like the Clone Wars and the Mandalorian got a lot of views on Disney Plus. I think visions probably is one of the leading shows on Disney Plus right now. And that, of course, they're going to make more. I mean, you know, there's hundreds, they're making hundreds of shows for that network. You know, they'll make a sequel to, 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 to anything that gets like some amount of viewers. So if this is one of the <laughs> top fair. shows, of course, there's going to be more stuff coming uh down the line um and uh 
obviously I think that would be great because we all thought it was brilliant and I can't imagine how it could even get better. So that's super exciting mm. that they could yeah. have a shot at making even more uh, stories like this and also give more creators a shot as well to just diversify even more what, what we're saying. So yeah. Yeah. Um, can I can I bring up a comment? Uh, Jesse yeah. Bennett yeah, says, you know, also with how different studios were involved, um, it could take some time. That's a really good point. Yeah, the fact that it was different studios, um, kind of related. But I, I think that was a really positive thing. Say if we only got the one season, like there was no more, it still brought together so many conversations of diversity. It kind of brought this realization that there's so many different styles in cinema and film and in cultures. And I found the past couple months of, you know, the build up to visions, there was a lot more positivity to that conversation of bringing together those different cultures. Um, and so, yeah, I, I love the fact that it was, yeah, not even just one studio that, that did, you know, the whole series. I, I love that everything was a different style and everything. I, I think there was a couple, there was a couple of studios that did two episodes, I think. Yeah. Or, yes. You know, yes. Um, but, but still just the fact that they used, you know, a couple of different ones. I think that really was just a really positive spin, not, um, you know, in the, be the behinds of the behind scenes of Star Wars that there's, <laughs> there's po positive things going back there too. Yeah. Um, which is really good. I enjoyed that the different styles. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, and that's you know what we had um, Joel's comment on the screen a second ago too, saying that you know it would be great to see other countries get involved too, other than Japan. Um, and mm. uh, I think uh, I agree with that Very too. True. And that's what I was thinking when I was watching it is, oh, this opens up the door for so much stuff because mm. you know you could have like, I mean, you could have some pretty crazy stuff. Like imagine like a, a, se a season of Star Wars Visions that's all Bollywood. And there's like a dance, <laughs> musical dance number at the end of every episode. Oh, yeah. Like, that, oh my God. Honestly, I want to see that <laughs> so bad. I mean, that. if you've seen some of the Bollywood stuff, it is so crazy, but like so impressive, like what they yeah. do. Like the, seeing Star Wars, because I think they've, I feel like they've done their own knockoff versions of Star Wars, but like, yep. uh, what was it? Turkish Star Wars <laughs> from way oh, back. Yes. <laughs> I've never oh, actually wow. seen it, but I don't. I don't know what's going on, but like, like that would be amazing. Like, ge genuinely, like Lucasfilm, hook them up, give them the license, and just let them go wild. I, I want to see, I want to see uh, Hungarian Star Wars because, because if those posters were any indication, those those posters from from the original Star Wars films that were Hungarian were with some of the trippiest art I've ever seen, like oh cubism God. and surrealism and looks like Picasso. Oh like so many that. possibilities. Free ideas here, Lucasfilm here. Yeah. Yeah. Kathy, Kathy take call it. us. Take one. Come on. They just I just love the concept of anthology. Like I, I feel like yeah. it's something that Star Wars works very oh, well yeah. when they do anthology type stories. Um like you know I love those uh those books from a certain point of view. Um, where it's right. an anthology of all different char characters experiencing Star Wars movies from different perspectives off camera. Like, you know, that's cool too. Like any anything like that is great. I, I want to see a good balance of that with just your typical kind of serialized storytelling that, that most mm. of the sh shows are. We, we, always, we always called Clone Wars an anthology series, which it was for the most part. But like, this is a true, like, nothing's really connected it's just one story one and done you know you might get a sequel you probably won't and you know you, that's fine like and you just go forward and as much as i would like to see sequels to the stories that we've got it would also be really interesting if they just went forward and like created a whole new nine episodes that are just completely different and unique done by completely different studios different writers different actors and just expanded mm -hmm. out even further where you're like oh here's another nine that i want sequels to because you're so amazing mm, mm. and to be honest i think that was going into visions before that i was i was a little worried about that fact of oh these are nine anthologies nine different ideas that aren't related to anything how how star warsy is this going to be that was right. my biggest question before watching it and then after my biggest takeaway was like, that was really Star Warsy. That felt very Star Wars. Yeah. <laughs> like I, I was really impressed with, yeah, even though it's anthology and it, it, it isn't necessarily connected directly to the stories we've gotten before. Like it still had those elements and had those feelings and, and you felt like you were in the same galaxy. Um, but yeah, it was an interesting point. Imagine if we just got, we just kept getting new stories like this and not unrelated. It would be overwhelming, but very enjoyable, I think. Oh, yeah. yeah.
yeah, that this is the foundation for so much great stuff. Like I'm so excited mm. about the future of, of this. And uh, I hope, uh, I hope those creators get, uh, the producers get a chance to produce more stuff. Cause it sounds like they want to. Yeah. So, and we, everybody wants mm. it. So Disney, let's go. Green light it, please. <laughs> let's do it. Um, Hunga us... Hungarian Star Wars. <laughs> oh. Let's green light that, yeah. please. <laughs> let's get that Bollywood. Star Wars Bollywood Hungarian visions. Yeah, that would be that would be <laughs> amazing. Visions. All right, oh. all right. So let's 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 move on uh, to some other Disney Plus stuff that's going on. And uh, <clears throat> the the big headliner this Huge. week was we got a poster. And a release date, finally, finally a release finally. date for the book of Boba Fett. Um, I think we have, do we have the poster to put up on the screen? Yep, there it is. There, there you is. go. That's there okay. I'll just sit behind him. <laughs> that's, that's Hannah on the throne. I'll right just, there. yeah, that's Hannah. that's me. Again, Zam yeah. was, I've changed, I've changed from Dominic to, to Boba. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Thank, uh, thanks, Chad. You can, gorgeous you can poster. Yeah, looks looks awesome. So uh, on it, that poster, if you didn't see, December 29th is the release date. So we're getting it on the uh, fifth day of Christmas. Because yes. as we all know, there's 12 days of yes. Christmas. Right. Oh. They, when they yes. said holiday 2021, they meant it. They meant like right yes. smack dab between Christmas and New Year's. So uh, hell, yeah, I'm, I'm game. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, yeah, absolutely. We got a synopsis as well with this. Yeah. Uh, the Book of Boba mm -hmm. Fett, a thrilling Star Wars adventure, finds legendary bounty hunter Boba Fett and mercenary Fennec Shan navigating the galaxy's underworld when they return to the sands of Tatooine to stake their claim on the territory once ruled by Jabba the Hutt and his crime syndicate. So really, I mean, from the little preview we got in that post credit scene at the end of Mandalorian Season 2, we pretty much got all that in that preview. There's nothing mm. super new from this uh, or, or kind of surprising about the synopsis. But mm. basically what it means is this is what we thought it was going to be. <laughs> yeah. Right. And like it's not it, and it seems to be we were I think the only debatable topic was like, OK, what is Boba Fett doing here? I guess it still could be true. But like, is it virtuous? Is it like, oh, we're going to turn things around and take over? Are we going to like take over? Like, seems like you would take over something like that to dismantle it because it's a criminal syndicate. You know, like <laughs> you, when you want to take over, yeah. like you, you don't take over a criminal syndicate, you take it down. But Boba Fett is, is in charge now. And he's, as they're saying, stake, staking their claim in this territory. Um, and Boba Fett mm -hmm. wants to be the big, big man on in the outer rim. Like, that's going to be interesting. Like, I'm very interested in that because we've heard, I think. I think uh, they've talked about it being revenge story, like Boba Fett's trying to get back at all the people that, that wronged him, and, and there's a lot of people that, on that list, I'm sure. But uh, you know, I'm I'm very intrigued by this kind of the confirmation of like, okay, this is where we're going with this, where we're going to pick up basically where Mando season two left off. That's fascinating. Mm, absolutely, and I think I, I I mean I don't know if this is going to be reading too deeply into it. But Star Wars is made for reading too deep into it anyway. Uh, okay. the t the, like the actual title of the show, The Book of Boba Fett, like the, I find that such an interesting title. And, you know, a book being often a lot of flashbacks, a lot of context, a lot of, uh, you know, the story going forward, but then realizing something in his past. And I feel like maybe that that really is kind of showing maybe what, what the show is going to be. It's going to be, a lot of uh, flash. I, well, I'm, I hope there is flashbacks in the show of you know those sto the stories of how he survived the Sarlacc pit. You know that's everyone's burning question about him, and I, I hope there are those callbacks. Um, and I really hope we see a Daniel Logan <laughs> play a young Boba. To be honest, I would love um, it. That'd be awesome. On, come on, yeah. And so I, I really hope. Um, yeah, we get those callbacks, but then, like what you're saying, like, I, it, it, what's, is he trying to take it over? Does he want to, like, rule, like, the palace now? Like, does he want to be a criminal overlord? Or is he trying to bring it down? And he's, like, he's retiring, kind of. He's almost at retirement level. You know, he's just kicking back with Fennec now. Like, yeah, what, what kind of direction <laughs> right. Boba himself is yeah. going to be going? Yeah, I really, I really get that, that overlord feel to it. That with him sitting down on that throne and then that being the, the poster again 
of him on mm. the throne and this idea that he's claiming territory. Mm. Like, you know, there's this big power vacuum, you know, that it looked like Bib Fortuna had kind of taken over a job of the mm. hut thing after job right. of the hut died. Um, and, uh, where's Dominic? <laughs> uh, Dominic has shapeshifted. He's shapeshifted to me. <laughs> yes. Um, he's at the Boonta Eve Classic. He'll be back next week. Um, and, uh, what was I saying? Uh, oh, it's the best Boba, story. Boba Fett derailed my train going through that, that planet in Clone Wars. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, it seems like, you know, he Mishka. wants to, you know, to, to, to killing Bib Fortuna and then sitting sitting on that throne sounds like he wants to be the next guy. He mm. wants to be the next Jabba, the next Maul, and perhaps he's mm. going to be more of an anti-hero, more of a benevolent person. But I mean, we don't really mm. know that. I mean, with, the only reason why we have positive feelings towards Boba Fett is because he was helping out Grogu and Din and and the and uh, the Mandalorian. So because he mm. was helping out the heroes we had this you know these good vibes about his character but mm. like we don't know that he's a good guy 100 percent. we don't know that for sure we don't know what he would do if he's in charge um so that's going to be interesting I, I think the whole thing i'm most interested to see in the show is just like how are they going to present his character like it, where mm. is he going to be on that line right. between hero and villain i expect somewhere in the middle but where there's a lot of space between those two things Mm, absolutely and it's got i think you know it's that classic star wars kind of character development of yeah the, the pull between the good and the evil and defining that and like what is maybe what he thinks is good you know to the galaxy isn't that good and, and vice versa um yeah just like what you're saying i think it's such a gray area and i i it's always interesting because yeah and you know the reason we like characters is sometimes because they just look cool and they do cool things but they're actually you know the villain or the bad character um, this is, yeah, it's going to be interesting if he is going to be such a, you know, a criminal and, you know, doing these bad things against the galaxy. And it'll be interesting to see where that takes him, if it is going to go that angle. Or if he's going to become a saint and save the whole of Tatooine from slavery. That could be also the storyline. That's <laughs> also possible. I'm just, I'm very curious what, like, I think we're accustomed to Star Wars storytelling to, at least most of the time, the storytellers have something they want to say. There's some kind of message behind it. There's mm. a moral, there's a something there that we can latch onto and, and take something from it to apply to our lives maybe. And I'm wondering like, what, where, where is Boba Fett now? Where does Robert Rodriguez wanting to say with this show, you know, and about someone who has, you know, seen their life, life flash before their, for their eyes, um, has literally died and came back where where is his head at where is he going and uh you know i'm very curious to see like what what is the book of Fett? like it could just be him going around kicking ass and taking names and i i'm not i'm not saying i'm going to complain about that because yeah, that'll be cool that <laughs> that episode be good. was pretty darn awesome of the mandalorian but i i hope it's deeper than that i hope there is some you know reflection some flashbacks would be great and just overall a sense of like what what is Boba Fett's deal? Like, where, where is, how is he defined as a character now? We know where he came from. I think some of the deepest stuff he ever got was in Clone Wars, which, you know, him kind of like mm. learning to be things and, and kind of struggling with the good and evil part of being a bounty hunter and doing all this stuff and him just wanting revenge against Mace Windu. And so where does that take him? Where is he at? Where does he want to go? Um, and does he want to be, be a good king or a bad king? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And Mace Windu, name drop there. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That's like my biggest prediction for the show. Mace is going to definitely come back in this show. I, I so, oh, yeah. man, that would be so good. <laughs> imagine, imagine. Boba's just kicking up and then he just hears the door open and it's Mace and he's just wandering through. What if Mace wants to work with him? And work for him. The Jedi Ooh. Order's crumbled. What if oh. Mace is just like, you know what? I'm just Thanks, Charlie. kicking back, you know. That's that's not gonna that's, that's not gonna go well. <laughs> no, oh, I, 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 I I was always confused as to why Boba and Mace didn't have uh, another confrontation, and they they had them have a little bit in the Clone Wars, which was nice, but there wasn't too much. I always to it. I always thought his uh you know you murdered my father and and 
you know, and then Mace going to say, well, you're just going to have to get over it. I'm like, wow, really? That's, that's yeah. your response that's, to you? Come on, that that wasn't enough. There needs to be something <sighs> else there. I'm not satisfied at all. No. So maybe, Again, maybe flashbacks, <laughs> bring Sam Jackson back. Do oh, it. Sam maybe Jackson. Been flying, a flying out of a window maybe changed his heart a little bit. <laughs> you know, his uh, life flashed before his eyes. He's got to change of heart now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you yeah, it's, that's 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 super super intriguing. Uh, yeah, so this a lot could happen. We're gonna find out. Um, we are. Let's see. October, November, December. Three months. We got three three months, three ninety months. days now to wait until until this comes out. But we got something. We got something coming up a little sooner than that in about six weeks. <laughs> we got. Yeah. Uh, do, we got do we? The, oh, Disney yeah. Plus Day. That's right. Disney yes, Plus. Day. Yes. <laughs> On November twelfth, which I don't—I'm just hearing about this now. Um, <laughs> well, I, the thing. I don't know a whole lot about it. I know they released like the full lineup of everything that's going to be happening in it, and they may have actually released more information since we first reported on this. But basically, the main Star Wars thing they're going to have it is some kind of like special look. Maybe they teased, and also they're saying a special celebrating the origins and legacy of Star Wars' legendary bounty hunter, Boba Fett. So I'm thinking maybe something like a little sizzle reel with Boba Fett, maybe. And maybe we'll get a little hint of Book of Boba Fett at the end. Hmm. Um, maybe a little thing, or maybe a full-on trailer. Who knows? Because they're going to be dropping a lot of stuff. Just be doing something, I think, with Hawkeye. I think maybe because it's hmm. the next big Marvel thing for Marvel Studios. Yeah. Um. So there's a lot going on. Who knows? I, Mar Disney Disney Plus Day is supposed to be huge. So like, well, well, I would expect more than just this. I don't want to get anybody's hopes up, but it would be nice. Yeah, that, that's super interesting. Of course, I'm not going to say no to anything Boba Fett. So I'm I'm excited they're including. <laughs> Boba in in this extravaganza that that they're having, and uh, hope they announce ten more new Star Wars shows. Let's go. Yeah, you mentioned because like, that's November's another story that literally just came out. It's like they're producing, they're looking to. Hollywood Reporter said eleven shows over the next several years. So um, that's a lot, and that's like more than they originally pitched a few months ago, back when they did that whole thing. So uh, mm. it's a lot of Star Wars coming, guys. It's, oh, yeah, gosh. a lot of Star Wars, a lot of Star Wars. And I, I hope the shows that we haven't heard much about, um, Acolyte, uh, the Ahsoka show, that, re yeah, really we haven't heard much of since they were announced, you know, th last year at, at uh, D the, uh, Disney Plus Day. Um, I, and I hopefully we just get a little bit more information. Maybe it's, oh, uh, that they've got their, you know, production team set or, you know, something like that, that that just says, oh, they're moving forward. You know, it's still a while away, but they're moving forward. Um, so that's what I'm kind of hoping for, but I'm not sure if that will happen this time around. But, yeah, it's interesting. So much to happen. So much to look forward to. I mean, if so not, much. there's a little convention happening next year where they might announce some things. At, oh, yeah. So. Yeah, that's true. We don't have that's to wait too long until we yeah. get some information. Um so speaking of the future and more shows coming up, we got a little update about The Mandalorian. Um, Katie Sackhoff was talking about it and talking about what's next for Bo-Katan. I'm um, in a Slash Film interview where she was asked about the character that she plays. Um, and her response was, uh, the way that Lucasfilm left me in season two, one of the roads uh, that could be gone down, absolutely you'd think would be the unfinished business but that is so far above my pay grade and you just don't know right as a fan of the show i'm just excited to see what they come up with that's, that's interesting because it sounds to me like she she hasn't filmed whatever is going to happen that's kind of the yeah how it sounds i'm wondering i still keep going back to the idea that maybe they film some stuff for after season two while they were filming for season two that maybe mm. we'll, when they had all that set built for the Moff Gideon's light cruiser that they filmed an additional scene that maybe we'll pick up right where it left off after Luke leaves and we'll see more of that and more of the conflict or, or maybe it'll just go forward and maybe Bo-Katan won't be around for a little while and it'll kind of be implied that, you know, whatever. I just, it seems like season three is obviously 
going towards like this Mandalorian conflict with more Mandalorians, including Bo Katan. So like, either she, maybe she's you know Katie Sackoff. She's a she's a professional. She's a she's a uh, a veteran of these sort of things. So uh, she could very easily be playing us right now and just playing dumb. <laughs> And mm. she could have filmed half a season by now. We would never know it. So, like, who knows? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, if if she is in it, in the season three in a big way, you, sh- you would want to stay tight-lipped about it. And, yeah, I think you got a p- good point. She's very – she's a veteran of this industry and she's very good at what she does. And I'm such a big fan of her. And I really hope we do see a lot more of her in season three. So, I, I yeah, I kind of take this as – she she's playing it off a little bit playing dumb and and she's going oh yeah well i mean she's like around you know and and but she's actually going to play a big part in season 3 um that's what i'm yeah that's the tone i'm taking from this comment it's interesting yeah yeah that that is such an intriguing season the way that they left off season 2 like it it opened the doors for so many interesting things in season 3 mm. i'm so excited for it and her character's really the central piece now to the future of this show and where it could go yeah. so mm. very excited about this um ooh, that would be cool charlie leaving a comment i just can't wait for the siege of mandalore 2 within both being ahsoka and the crime syndicate power boba fett reclaiming his heritage that'd be quite quite the um point. yes sense. please oh that sounds awesome yeah yeah <laughs> that would be super imagine. cool imagine imagine well, we can act that out now with, we these, can. with these Funko <laughs> we Pops can. that were revealed then. They Not dumped a bunch this. on us. They dumped a bunch of Funko Pops on us. Not literally. I wish they had. Hey, <laughs> I wish. My that's, that'd be Pops. good. Hey, come on give now. Me, give me all of them. We've got a bunch <laughs> of uh, Season 2 Mandalorian Funko Pops that are great. And and some that tie in directly with Bet Book of Boba Fett. Right. You see the uh, Boba and Fennec on the throne. There's a uh, uh, frog lady. There's a uh, Luke with Grogu, my personal favorite, I think. Oh, finally, yes. finally get Cobb Vanth. Oh, uh, yes. With and without his helmet, which is great. We get Boba Fett with and without his helmet in the same armor. Fennec Shand, um, and then Grogu doing his thing, doing his meditation, and uh, Din with the spear, holographic Din, and then a, uh, a what is it? Uh, a, a dark trooper, yeah, yeah. So, uh, whew, I want them all. I want them all. I am they the obsessive fantastic. Funko. You see, right yeah. over there. Actually, this that's true. Me. That's true. Look at you. Yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. They all look really good. I think like a design every time they release these gets a little bit crisper and every uh, yeah. better every time. Uh, I've got to mention, yeah, the Cobb Vanth one without the helmet looks so good. How can a Funko Pop be hot? Ah, it's so <laughs> like what. He looks so good. And I do have to reference. (laughs) I know. The hair even. I do have to reference in our show yesterday in at Star Wars Culture, we were talking about Cobb Vanth. And I blatantly mispronounce uh Timothy Oliphant's name. And I I called him Timo Lee. Uh I don't know how that happened. Chad didn't pick it up, nor I. Uh so I'm making sure this episode, uh this show, I Timothy Oliphant, who looks very good as a Funko Pop. Love it. (laughs) He's not named after Christopher Lee. Not as no, important. no, Tim Lee. <laughs> Tim Lee Elephant. Oh my God. And the the Fennec Shant looks really, really good too. The Fennec, yeah. um, you know, I, I would, I would want more of her stuff, more um, merch from her. Uh, so that that looks really, really good. She looks great as a Funko Pop as well. And yeah, it's so exciting. Always yeah, loves getting be- way better with the likenesses now because you go back to like mm-hmm. early Funko Pops. They're like just your generic person. <laughs> <laughs> with a right, with a Star like Wars a... costume. Now they're like, wow, I actually that does look like Ming Na Wen. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, looks, looks so looks good. Super mm. awesome. Super awesome. Speaking of things that are totally awesome, uh, you know, some of you might be <laughs> might already have this by the time that you're watching it. For those watching us the live, however, it's tomorrow. Terrifying tales that Lego Star Wars Halloween. Oh, I probably have that now. I have that now. How dare you? I know, because it's October 1st. 
I, oh wait, do I? Oh, I don't know. screw you people living in the future. <laughs> Damn you. Not fair. <laughs> Not fair. Well, go, you can go watch it and come I back. Know, I know. I, yeah. Tell us how good it is. Why am I here? I just, what? <laughs> right? <laughs> what? Can I leave now? Oh, gosh. But uh, we yeah, just saw it on, on the screen. They released a, a new poster to hype us up for that. And uh, it's it's from that beautiful, shining <laughs> reference. Um, and, Got all and, the characters, and they're all yeah, they're all in that crack. Roger in the, in the, in the, <laughs> here, yeah. Here's Roger. <laughs> I yeah. I love Mother Towson at the top there as well. I'm I'm just so happy that we're getting her again, and I hope she's yes. like the comedic genius of this show. I hope she's <laughs> like the, the funny one of the show. I love that character. I I love that we get a Lego version of her. She looks really good. <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> so right. good. All right, so, let's see. Ben, we got uh, a bunch of Obi-Wan news. Yes. So Ewan McGregor's been making the runs. Actually, a lot of the actors have been doing a lot of stuff, which is why we have a ton of Obi-Wan news. Mm -hmm. Starting it off with Ewan McGregor, who won an Emmy. The guy won an Emmy, not for Obi-Wan Kenobi, not a preemptive. I know he deserves <laughs> one, even though we haven't seen a single <laughs> Hasn't even seen frame it? He's got of one. him in the show. He still deserves an Emmy. I'm, we'll, we, oh, yeah. we can okay. agree on that. Mm -hmm. um, but he got an Emmy for his his uh, apparently amazing performance in, in Halston, uh, which just came out recently. And uh, so he was, of course, doing the rounds, doing the interview stuff. And uh, we had the video, but it's really, you can go watch it. I think it's on uh, Variety. Where he basically says, uh, yeah, they're finished filming, confirmed that, and said it will not disappoint. So mm. uh, we're holding you to that, Ewan. Um, it better yeah. not disappoint. It better not disappoint every single one of us. I'm, I'm sure it'll disappoint someone and someone will be mad. But anyway, um, yeah, it's great, to, it's great to hear Ewan. He does not have a beard. I guess he shaved it Ooh, after filming. Strange. So... Does that mean he like ends the series with a beard, or does he just not? Ooh, flashbacks. They <laughs> shoot, they shoot yeah, all the that. all the old Ben ones with the beard, and then they go back shoot all the flashbacks without. The they're beard. gonna do. They're gonna do a Rayco Hardeen flashback. They're gonna do that yes. scene where he gets yes. shaved, yes. and he's the needle in his face and turns to then... Rayco Hardeen. That's the scene we're getting. I would love that. Oh I'm my sure gosh! That. Please, please. <laughs> oh, but no, they're, they're four very sweet words. It will not disappoint. Um. You know, any anything he could have said like one word, and everyone's like, "Oh my gosh, yeah. we can't wait!" You know, it's, it's he's got that kind of an influence in the. It's just that it's, that, it's that, it's that meme, oh, so that's Obi Wan meme, visible happiness, just like yeah, yeah like oh, Ian yeah. McGregor says anything, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and everyone's just like, okay, <laughs> no, but I think I think. I mean, that's actually a big statement. It will not disappoint. Like he knows, he would know how divisive Star Wars is, and he's like. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. This will not disappoint. You should not like, have said that, statement. Ewan. All right. You should not have said that. <laughs> you built it up now. Oh, gosh. Built it up. I mean, this is not, this is <laughs> just, you know, the most anticipated TV show of all time. That's, that's all it is. Oh, my Absolutely. God. I just realized, uh, I think it was, uh, who, who said, who said turn, have JT do Rayco Hardy? That was Matt. Yeah. Matt. I love the idea of doing it live action, but they have Ewan McGregor, they shave him clean. And then they put the needle in his face, and he turns into James Arnold Taylor. That would be great. <laughs> I mean, we got we got a taste Incredible. of that in uh, what was it? Uh, Hughes the Force, James Arnold Taylor. Yes, the exactly. Obi Wan. So he's got the experience. He, he can, can do, do the voice, so like it would yeah, be perfect. Mm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, awesome that, change ever. That'd be awesome. Uh, that's mm. not all the news though. There's more. No. Oh, so Sun Kang who you will know as Han Solo from the Fast and Furious movies, among other things. <laughs> um, he has been making the rounds, and he has been kind of open with talking about his role in the Obi-Wan Kenobi show. And he confirmed that he's very excited about it. He talks about at length about how he's been a fan of the show from for years. He talks about hanging out on the set with Darth Vader. So uh, it seems he will be at least working with him. Maybe his character is, there's a, there's some stuff out there. I don't know if I can actually talk. Can I do spoilers here? Potential spoilers? No. no. Okay. No. <laughs> Chris, your face. <laughs> no. This is Star Wars a Roll no. podcast. There's a certain no. order where you got the news, you got the spoilers, you got the rumors. All, I won't. Don't touch each other. You don't let the peas and the mashed potatoes mix. That's true. You got to keep it separate. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I won't that. give away. Okay. But this no. is Sorry. this little <laughs> piece of news. I mean, it, it's like a 
very minor, minor spoiler, um, potentially, but he, he confirmed that he wields a lightsaber in the show. So there's a lot. Of, you can take that as you will. There is some stuff yeah. out there. I won't no, talk about funny. it. If if you can put some pieces together, you can. He, he's working with Darth Vader, wearing a you know using a lightsaber. Um, there's a lot of places you can take that, but uh, very interesting. Very interesting that we're not just going to get Vader, but potentially other characters, Jedi, Sith, who knows? Yeah. Um, and and throwing in the idea of like, okay. We could have flashbacks, you know. There's there's so many mm-hmm. things going back to Clone Wars. Um, mm-hmm. I think very interesting, like who he's playing, what he's doing, what Vader's doing, all this stuff because we have no idea. Mm. If I don't see a helicopter live action <laughs> lightsaber, I will I will not re- like watch the rest of the show. Honestly, I need that helicopter. What if it's going to be in the last? It's going to be in the last scene. Actually, so that's true. You, it could be I mean, the last scene. Okay, I'll watch the whole thing. If it's not in no. it, bad show. No, no that, that, I'll, that, that I'll is, cancel. There's it. only one reason why they would put that in in uh, <laughs> <laughs> in this in the show. Like, there's only one reason. Because yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I don't yeah. Know what I'm saying. <laughs> good. That's good, Chris. Well said. I think you've summed it up there. <laughs> okay. It what, up for us. A, a, couple, a, a couple other Obi Wan Kenobi things while we're while we're here. Um. So there has been mm. some mm. merch out for the Obi Wan Kenobi series. Right. Um. Yeah. Not not merch you can pick up at your local uh, Walmart or wherever whatever you have in your local place. Um. It is merch for wrap gifts for the crew. Ooh. One of the people that people were like posting, I guess this, this was an NDA attached because people were just posting them. Uh, the first one to post it was none other than Aunt Beru herself, Bonnie Peace, who said, who posted Come this on, Aunt Insta- Beru. In- yeah, who, who posted on Instagram and said, uh, When Deborah Chow sends you a rap gift with some Obi Wan swag, content- counting my blessings. And she's got a like amazing Obi Wan Kenobi hat. And awesome. this crew jacket, which is just, I want one. Mm. I want one. So yeah. I'm mad. Like, Looks don't really have good. Mm. And uh, to be honest, when I first looked at this photo, I thought that was Amy Poehler. I, thought, <laughs> I was like, Amy Poehler? What is she doing in the Kenobi series? What the hell? Didn't get that. Like, oh, no, 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 no. Now, now, now we know uh, who's going to be playing Aunt Peru in the SNL after <laughs> this comes out. Oh, absolutely. That's actually 100%. great casting. <laughs> yeah. Oh, incredible! Um, I think there good. was a there was another there was a, one of the uh, VFX artists or one of the uh, concept artists who yeah, posted. Right. There's a little card, there's a T-shirt, there's all kinds of stuff. I want it all, man. Mm. But, I wonder uh, how much that would be if that got leaked. Show, yeah, that's true. Well, well somebody just put but... that. Will that just end up on eBay? Surely someone is putting it on eBay at this point. I'm sure. Yeah, that surely is... you can just. Do the design. How many? Yeah. How much? How many? How much money? Do I, how many things do I have to sell to get that? Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, some, some, somehow Steve Sansui ends up with everything. So <laughs> you know that. Yeah, just ask Steve. Get out. Just ask Steve. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then, and then, none other than Lord Vader himself, mm. Hayden Christensen, was spotted at Florida SuperCon just a few weeks ago, wearing an Obi Wan Kenobi stunt hat on his head Ooh. and uh, it looks really cool and just also just great seeing Hayden again because we don't mm. see him that often and uh, looking great and uh, just I still I haven't fully processed that he's back I haven't fully like yeah. it hasn't sunk yeah. in that like Oops. Hayden Christensen is back at Star Wars guys he's happening he's gonna be right? apparently playing Darth Vader or maybe Anakin like I can't believe it I genuinely it's like awe inspiring to like see him back and see him hanging out with fans take pictures and also he apparently filmed a new star wars series and we haven't seen show us something deborah chow uh mm. but uh yeah. yeah yeah absolutely it hasn't yeah it hasn't sunk in i like that's i'm the exact same i'm like hayden hayden christensen he's he's really and i just can't believe it it's honestly it's gotta be so good even if it's for like a two-minute scene for the whole show. Yeah, it's gonna be incredible. It's it's gonna be like a wild, wild moment to see that and hear that voice. Even though you know Matt Lanter, we we're so used to Matt Lanter in Clone Wars and all that kind of stuff. Um, to hear Hayden's voice as Anakin again, or even as you know a Darth Vader voice, would be just so satisfying and so am- amazing uh, to hear and to see and to see his face. Hopefully, hopefully. 
Has someone figured out what it says in Arabesh? Like, I didn't even notice surely, that until now. Surely someone has to... It's so low res, it's hard to read. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. But it's it's definitely rough there. I wonder someone if that's... Someone on Twitter has Surely, to yeah, done. yeah. Twitter or Reddit, someone's, someone's decoded that. But it's interesting how it's, it's, you know, it's not just the crew stuff, it's the stunts. I found that yeah. interesting. I'm like, okay, yeah. we... we we might be seeing some real physicality, maybe some sort of a duel, some sort of a fight, um, you know, with with someone. So very interesting, yeah, that it's stunts, not just... He's saying that he did his own stunts. That's what he's flexing. He's yeah, like, I, he's, I, like, I he's like, hey, I'm still kicking. I'm still yeah. around. He yeah. looks yeah. freaking great. You know he did all his own stunts. You know he did all the lightsaber <laughs> training, man. I just want to see, I just want to see you and... I want to see the new footage of Ewan and Hayden mm. sparring backstage. Yes. That's what I want to see. Yeah. They don't good. have to release a trailer. Just those two on set bantering like they always did, catching their fingers on the lightsaber, like all that stuff I want. Surrounded by a blue screen, only a blue screen. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, well, you know what? It's gonna be it's gonna be cool to hear. I think I think if I'm not mistaken, I think Ewan's already talked about the volume. And in an interview, yes, um, I think so yes. it'll be great yeah. to hear some of the other actors' experiences who worked on the prequels, like Hayden and mm -hmm. like Bonnie, give their their reactions to the, it, it, describing how different it is acting in front of a blue screen versus in, inside the volume. Like it's it's fascinating yeah. to hear the difference because again, it's just so it sounds so much more immersive. It sounds so much more easier to get into character when you have the scene already around you. You don't have to imagine everything uh in your head mm. yeah yeah absolutely Immersive, yeah, and that, and that was one of like ewan's biggest complaints and ewan's not someone who complained a whole lot or like what was someone who was vocally like i hated star wars or whatever like he he like he seemed very overjoyed by the experience but still every time you talk to him it's like Man, the green screen was getting so old by Revenge of the Sith because there was like no mm. sets; it was just all green. And so, bringing mm. them back and getting them to actually like be on a set and you know do things in front of you know even even though it's a screen, it's not a green screen and it feels real. That's got to be liberating. Mm, absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you, yeah, you have that good point because it, yeah, it's that classic you know behind the scenes stuff that you would you know is on YouTube somewhere of yeah him complaining about that and saying how difficult that was so oh man imagine if you could if they did tours of the volume one day and you can <laughs> go in there yourself and you you know mm. pick your own uh you know planet you want to be it would just be incredible you know to be around that kind of a space i mean knowing knowing disney I, you gotta think they're gonna integrate it into the parks that's something. exactly what i was gonna say they're oh yeah they are totally working on that right now figuring out what ride or what experience they can do to fit that into well, the park universal mm. kind of had something similar to it with their um king kong ride mm. at universal where they put you mm. in uh kind of like some type of like like a tram and then you go in to the space and you're surrounded by screens and then you, I think you have 3D glasses on, and it's all this 3D stuff that's going on around you on screen. So that's kind of the closest thing to the volume that I've seen myself is mm. that. But, you know, it's just that the resolution was pretty low. Like, it didn't look super realistic. So I imagine that obviously made for film, the volume looks so much crisper and realer. Um, so it'd be mm. really cool to see an updated ride that's modern that has like those like 8K screens or whatever it is. Mm. Um, that'd be right. so cool. And, and obviously with the volume, like the way it's set up is you have the screen in the background and the reason it doesn't look like rear projection like old movies is the camera is locked to the screen and it mm. moves with it and, right. and, and changes the scenery as it goes so that it mm -hmm. always is looks right. In, yeah. yeah. So it would be interesting to see how they figure out a way to like do that but with like people's eyes whether it's that'll like, be trippy like would you could you do it with like just a special pair of glasses that kind of mimics yeah, that you, same effect you, you would you'd be able to do it with a motion sensor like you know going back to like the the old that old technology like the connect star wars and playstation move oh, and like iconic. all that stuff 
you know, you move your body, you would know where your body oh, was. Oh, Star Wars Connect Ooh, yeah. triggered, sorry. You really triggered yeah. a memory that was in the caverns of my brain. Oh, it's good, Dom- good thing Dominic isn't here. We, we've just, well, I was just saying, we might have just proved that Dominic does have an alter ego. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Because, oh, wow. <laughs> Putting things together here. Uh, <laughs> Hannah also loves Connect Star Wars. Hmm, there's only, how many people could love Connect Star Wars? There's only one, only two people do. <laughs> oh. But, um, <laughs> Sorry, this is so good. Um, oh. oh yeah, yeah. So, so basically, if they know where your body is, they can then have the yeah the the angles of um, the shots on the screen work mathematically with like the triangulation mm. of where your body is, so or where your head is. So when you're looking at it, it's mm. always the right angle. You don't get that weird effect that you get when like you go and like me when I went to go watch Doctor Strange. And I sat in the front right seat of the theater. And I, <laughs> the whole movie was like sideways. <laughs> like that was oh, not geez. fun. Um, yeah, so yeah, that, that's, that's of course what you would get if you didn't have that effect. Mm. So that could look super cool. And that's probably why the King Kong stuff looks weird. That's probably why that ride didn't feel completely 100% realistic. Um, mm. Cause yeah. you didn't have that technology. It still was a flat, even though it was supposed to look 3D. It, the screen was flat. And mm. so each person saw a different angle of the screen. So you could tell it was flat. Um, mm. So they could yeah, and that's the King thing, Kong. And that's the thing with rear projection. Like you, you'll see, you'll go back and watch a movie with Cary Grant. And it's like, though, you know, it's a driving scene. And, you know, they're doing the whole thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it's the screen in the background. And it's <laughs> yeah. like, it's clearly rear projection. But you can kind of like, since the camera's locked off, you're not necessarily drawing, your eyes yeah. aren't drawn to it. When you start like, panning around it's like oh wow that's like a flat surface or like if you watch like you know scenes of i think wizard of oz like you know dorothy be wandering off and clearly she's just gonna smack into a giant man painting yeah. but yeah, you, can't, yeah, yeah. you can't see it mm-hmm. um you know they've now taken basically that old technology and turned it into like okay now we can make it seamless and make it look like thing and, and you know maybe a couple times you can see but like most of them it's hard to even tell if they could Anyway, replicate that for Disney parks. That would be oh, amazing. That would be that would be so cool. Mm-hmm. What? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I just I'm so excited about the future of of theme parks. Like you know, with all the 3D technology that they have and the VR technology, like there's just so many cool things that I think are we're we're gonna have um, in our lifetimes. I'm just so stoked about it. Um, yeah. Speaking um, of something also in our lifetimes. Yeah. So we've got. Up next, we've got a little update on Andor. Um, and as they do, again, more actors just saying stuff. And we've got Diego Luna. You, 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 it's, it's hard to find someone who has such an infectious love of Star Wars more than Diego Luna. And uh, mm-hmm. he was doing the thing. I think he was promoting something else, uh, one of his uh, upcoming projects or one of his projects that's out now. But, uh, and he said, uh, quote, to be honest, it's been such a blessing to do this job and to do it under these circumstances. I had the chance to work with the team, with a team that I couldn't be more proud of and admire. It's more of a hardcore moment to be out there shooting. And we are really lucky we're done with the shooting now and getting ready for audiences to see it. So they're done. Um, And he says, well, I can't say much. What I can tell you is that the experience was literally a transformation for me. It's something that I really wanted to do and that I thought was not going to be able to be able to do I'm, I'm more than happy and then he also went on to say that we are going to be seeing some familiar faces hmm. so mm. so that's opened up the floodgates to a lot of theorizing we've heard a few rumors and maybe even potential spoilers if you haven't heard those i won't mention them um i don't even remember some of them i know i mean it's been confirmed that we have we're gonna have mon mothma back uh, Jeremy mm. O'Reilly, which is yes. great. Mon uh, yes. Yeah, and uh, a few others. And K2 is not going to be in the season, so maybe next season. But uh, there's a lot of potential here, I think. You know, in this era with Rogue One, there's a lot of interesting people that could show up, Rebels related or not. Um, mm. And even maybe some, speaking of Rebels, you know, we're, we're in that time period. Who knows? Um, there's a lot of we've definitely seen the idea that you know animated characters can easily make it make the jump over to live action. So 
who knows what familiar faces will mean, especially to someone like Deggy Luna. But uh, yeah, excited. Yeah, and I think the Andor series for me has been very much in the shadow of Kenobi, Book of Boba Fett coming out, um, and you know all the stuff, you know Bad Batch coming. You know, like we've had a really big year of content and still stuff coming. Right. Where Andor's kind of taken a, a bit of a backseat. Maybe that's different, but just personally, like that's what I've seen and thought of. Um, but I think that's gonna be like a positive thing. I think we are gonna get some. Really cool stories. I, I'm hoping for some real Rebels esque, uh, especially that like season three, four of Rebels, um, where we we get a lot of those conversations of politics and you know those jostles of different opinions within the rebellion, like a lot of that kind of stuff, that kind of conversation of stories. Um, I hope that's in the Andor series, and I hope that's kind of uh, y- y- like a baseline for what Andor is going to like achieve and like what the sh- what's the show going to show us. Um, yeah, it's definitely going to be like the dark horse of Star Wars shows. I think it's going to be really kick-ass. I think it's going to be a really good show when it when it finally uh, hits us. Is it the start of next year? Is that when it comes? Yeah. The, yeah, yeah it next year, seems it? Yeah. I think like we're, we're getting oh. Andor Kenobi and uh, uh, Bad, what else? Bad Batch 2. Bad, Bad Batch, Batch 2. Yeah, there's, there's definitely gonna be more weeks with Star Wars than without Star Wars next. Yeah, year. it's yeah. definitely there's looking like of... between the Marvel and the Star Wars shows, we could be looking at every single week a new yeah. episode of something, oh, if not sure. a multiple episodes of something every single yeah. week mm-hmm. for the year of 2023, which is like, yeah, and that's not gonna dream. stop. That's not gonna stop. Like we, no. I mean, right now technically there's still stuff. Like I think What If is still happening right or is that one more episode there's one, so there's gonna be a little gap between the ending of what if and the beginning of hawkeye right so that's probably the last gap that's gonna happen probably not gonna be mm. anymore after mm. yeah you're right it's gonna start with hawkeye's gonna start in november run through, through christmas through. Oh, okay. it's gonna end yeah. with christmas because it's the christmas show yep. and then book of both it will start and who knows when the next mm. great break will be okay. we're gonna yeah. we're gonna run right through and it just dawned on me like yeah, Bad Bad Season 2, like, we'll be right around the corner. Also, yeah. something that's not in the notes that I need to mm-hmm. bring up really quick since we're talking about Bad Batch. Mm-hmm. Um, Michelle Ang, who we know as Omega. <laughs> um, Omega. Omega. <laughs> um, you can say it a lot better than I can. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, Omega. Yeah, so she posted on Instagram, and I need to actually look up the thing that she posted. But basically, she was like, hey, I'm back in the studio doing omega again Ooh. tidying it up and people are nice. like ah, ha, ha, season two so they're working mm-hmm. on it seems that season two is well in production i would assume they already have it recorded probably close to being finished animating it probably yeah, and- usually they record the voice first and then animate around the performances so that the facial expressions are the same and everything so mm-hmm. yeah yeah so we're looking at you know bad batch right around the corner and then andor yeah. and then kenobi and then Mandalorian season three and so much. They, 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 mm. just, they just keep going on, going on. It's like, oh, Ahsoka. Oh, Lando, Acolyte. Doesn't stop. Vision <laughs> season two, hopefully. Like, doesn't stop. Yeah, yeah. It keeps stop. going because because Book of Boba, sorry. Yeah, wait. Book of Boba Fett is how many, do we know how many episodes that is? The four. Oh, eight, 12? I, do I we? What? What? <laughs> 27? I, no I don't know. I was thinking it was going to be Four, but I don't know where I got that from. Ooh, I might have just four. it might have been just a that's, guess. That sounds yeah. short, but I, <laughs> maybe, I, you know, I, I have nothing to maybe. I have nothing to contradict that. Yeah. I've not heard anything else. Well, see, I originally just, thought it was going to be like, you know, how they would do those vignette shorts between Rebels seasons, and I kind right. of they would do mm. usually like four of those, and then a whole season of Rebels. So because I thought it was going to be tied to season two of The Mandalorian and one would, or season three of The Mandalorian. I was thinking there'd be four, and then we get the season through the Mandalorian. But now it looks like there's going to be a big gap between those Maybe, two things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because because I was going to say we we got Book of Boba Fett probably taking us into February. You know, you know, if we got four to six weeks of yeah. that, and then Andor in between of assuming Bad Batch will come back again um, on May the fourth on in May. So it's like mm. the first half of the year is just like full of Star Wars. Hypothetically, yeah. it's just yeah. yeah. It's chock a block and crazy. Crazy. Yeah. yeah. That's that's super amazing. Um and more content. We got more content being announced. I know, we keep... <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, just keeps going. Uh, right. for the for the record, for the record, 
it has been confirmed that Robert Rodriguez has has directed several episodes. Plus, we have returning John Favreau, Bryce Dallas Howard, and Dave Filoni directing episodes. So that's like Bryce Dallas Howard. That's yes. like oh, oh, yes. at least at least four four or five episodes there. Yeah, just if all those are directing one episode. That's a good point. And then we have more with Robert, Ray, Ray, Robert Rodriguez, um, yeah, well, uh, directing well, a, a lot go. of different episodes. So, so like, it sounds like we could we could be getting at least five or six. Matt Hardy in the hopefully. chat says he heard six somewhere. That sounds hopefully. right. That sounds right. That's oh. good. So speaking of uh, six, actually, <laughs> uh, so uh, what I was about to say is that we got um, some information from Collider uh, about uh, Lawrence Kasdan. Uh, he's going to be directing a six-part docu-series focused on the life of George Lucas and industrial mm. light and magic. So that really fascinating. Um, this information is coming from the composer James Newton Howard, who's uh, his friend. Um, and uh, and uh, he, uh, I'm just going to read this thing instead of trying to paraphrase it because my brain's frying. According to composer James <laughs> Newton Howard, his friend... <laughs> And a longtime contributor at Lucasfilm, Lawrence Kasdan, a man who is cre a credit writer on some of the studio's biggest films, such as The Empire Strikes Back, Raiders of the Lost Ark, Return of the Jedi, Force Awakens, and Solo, will be directing mm -hmm. a six-episode docuseries on Lucas and ILM. Um, and this was revealed on The Score, the podcast, where Howard said that he had just finished scoring the documentary. So this is how we found out we were talk they were talking about scoring films and documentaries and he mentioned that he just scored this Lawrence Kasdan six-part docu-series um and also mm -hmm. related to Lucasfilm uh, Howard revealed he might be involved with the upcoming Disney plus sequel to Lucasfilm's 1988 film Willow which will be overseen by John Kasdan the son of Lawrence Kasdan mm -hmm. so well, Kasdan's are seem like they're very busy yeah right now with Star Wars and Lucasfilm related projects. That's it is cool. it is very interesting that James Newton Howard's like talking about this like, oh yeah, I just did this thing that hasn't been announced yet. They haven't even announced that this is happening yet. He just finished scoring. That's usually one of the yeah. last things they do is put the music to it. So mm. um I'm so who knows where this is going to be coming out on. It may may or I don't think it's going to be a Disney Plus thing, but it may be, who knows? um but I mean, where, where else would it go at this point <laughs> yeah we're <laughs> that's true that's true yeah. oh, no hbo max <laughs> <laughs> coming out on dvd box set <laughs> blu-ray no, 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 no. blu next year vhs <laughs> going old school oh so but good. this sounds very interesting i think I it would be very interesting yeah. to see not just a documentary but a documentary from lawrence kaz's perspective being someone who worked with george forever you know so yeah. Very, very interesting, you know, and George Lucas, I, I think there probably hasn't been enough docu-series about George Lucas. Um, mm -hmm. And there's been a lot of documentaries, but, you know, there still isn't enough to kind Not of... Not recently, either. Like, a lot of the good stuff came out in, like, the 80s and 90s. Um, mm. Like, uh, yeah, there hasn't been anything super recently that George Lucas was all over that's about George Lucas. So, okay, mm. so the big question here is, are we going to get some some good juicy right george lucas interview content juicy we, is, he gonna is he gonna drag him out of his basement where he's been making Dr those those independent films he's been talking about well, and get him on camera you know is what oh my God. you know what I, I i i think it should be the other way around i think that you know i we're not assuming here that we're gonna have Kasdan talking to lucas in the documentary perhaps Kasdan is just like producing directing writing it but Let's say, because sometimes this is the case, the person doing the documentary is asking the questions, and it's that type of project. So they're sitting down together, and it's, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, two of the greats all time, George Lucas, Lawrence Kasdan. And then George Lucas turns the tables on Kasdan and says, so I'm about that solo movie, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> George, you're our only hope. <laughs> only, well, there's only one person with that. Could get Lawrence Kasdan to answer questions about what happened with Solo. Oh, <laughs> oh man, the B-roll on this documentary, one would have to see, man. Incredible. Uh, and, like, like, how much post-Disney buyout, George, have we seen? 
not not a lot. We've not seen a lot. That so. One interview where he yeah. said some really weird things with yeah. what is, what's his name, and then there was that one thing where they caught him walking down the street in Chicago. Um, just yep. like, like he walks past the camera, he's like, "Oh, it's George Lucas." Like that's basically <laughs> it. Mm-hmm. Oh, so yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. I I hope we. What if he's just like totally mellowed out i mean he was already pretty a mellow guy you know it's not like he was you know pretty outspoken but but uh yeah it's gonna be really interesting to see um you know if it's just gonna be a, a, a spliced of his history which i think a lot of it will be but uh but also current current george what what is that what is he doing <laughs> yeah coming out of his basement i know? would very much like to hear what george has to say right now because obviously we got the we got the post Disney buyout kind of regretful George, the George that was like, I'm not, I think I made a mistake like that kind of George. And I, I, I would hope no longer fast. <laughs> that's really sorry. That's really good. <laughs> Jesse, no longer faster and more intense. Oh boy. Um, but like this, I, I hope he's moved on. I hope he's happy now. I hope he's satisfied. I hope he's, come to terms with all this and and like can just move on and like he did this to raise a new daughter and 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 do all this i hope he's doing that i hope he's happy mm. yeah. Ma- yeah matthew Absolutely. in the chat's wondering if this is connected to the museum that's because the actually the lucas museum museum um, museum museum, museum. Yeah. <laughs> yes. um, museum. sorry I, that, <laughs> since every once in a while the red museum. comes out and i say museum <laughs> um, <laughs> See, there's all kinds well, of stuff. So I don't know. See, that I don't have so to put jarring. a hat on for this, for this accent. It just That's comes true. up every once in a while. Museum. But the museum was uh, in the news recently saying that uh, they're gunning for, oh. I think, a next year release date. Yeah. Release date, opening date. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's up. Like, they've kind of, like, it's up. It's all framed out, and they're working yep. on it. So, mm-hmm. like, they probably by next year. I think they were gunning for maybe this year. Or maybe it's the next year. Yeah, I originally was going to be this year, and I think COVID delayed it. Like everything mm. was delayed. Yeah, yeah. Like, like literally everything. Yeah, but uh, that's exciting. They, th- they said there like there's like two or three theaters inside of it. Like mm. it's going to be crazy. Yeah, so maybe maybe it's an exclusive, you know, Jesus. documentary <laughs> that's going <laughs> to faster, more, more intense, <laughs> slower, <laughs> more intense. <laughs> no, more but, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe yeah, maybe it's the documentary that'll play in one of those theaters, and you have to go to the museum to see it. It's possible. There's, there's got to be. Every museum has those that you know eight minute movie that you yeah. watch before you go in. Like, come on. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, that's, yeah. that's that's true. That's, that's Expect that. Expect that. <sighs> okay. Um. Okay. So there's a little another little bit of Lucasfilm news that mm-hmm. uh, came about. Something that was kind of surprising was the fact that uh, Lynn Hale, who was the head of publicity and communications at Lucasfilm. For 35 wow. years. Oh, God. Is retiring. <laughs> and I say, wow, um, she earned that very much so. I didn't realize and, she had been around for that long. Like, yeah. I've, I think I, I don't I don't know her that well, but obviously you've heard the name. If you if you pay attention at all, you've heard the name Lynn Hale. She's was I think she came on pre Phantom Menace to help do that yeah. movie. And she's been with them ever since. And she's been through thick and thin, and you know it's 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 crazy. Um, but thirty-five but, years. That's 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 going back to the eighties. Oh, you're think, right. Like that's right. That's yeah. not long ago oh. from the Jedi. Yeah, like that's like eighty-six. That's a, she was yeah. doing like probably Young Indie Chronicles yeah. and Radio Land Murder stuff Willow, or whatever Willow else was going was 88. on. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. It's really interesting to be in that for that long, and because it's gone, Star Wars has gone through. Um, mm. Yeah, or well, Lucasfilm's gone through so many yeah. major changes, and especially in, in publicity and communications. You know, there's there's always been a lot of drama, a lot of uh, intensity around that job. I can imagine that has its stresses being <laughs> head of publicity in uh, in Lucasfilm. So yeah, that's incredible to say that for that long. She, so I so, mean, so oversaw you know publicity for two of the biggest trilogies ever so yeah. like that's that's saying something i mean what, what's impressive else. about it is you know that in the 1980s that was before the internet was related to publicity at all and 
of course, yeah. definitely before social media. Now it's almost so, all online. <laughs> now it's all online yeah. and yeah, you know, yeah, all about exactly. the social media feedback on stuff. So it's, it's, it's a very impressive that, you know, she could adapt to the changing technology and communications and have that job for so long and do it well. Like that's, that's yeah, really impressive. Absolutely. Very impressive. Very, very impressive. And yeah, happy retirement. And uh, yeah, she earned it. <laughs> Heck yeah. By a yes. lot. By a lot. Heck yeah. Uh, speaking um, of some people that have been uh, involved with Lucasfilm for a while, Hasbro's got uh, some exciting new action figures coming up. Yes, they do. Two different action figures. One that's like, really cool and one that's like oh my god i have to have <laughs> right yeah so the first one the first one is a uh it's th- part of their new gaming greats i think it's part of the uh, lucasfilm 40th anniversary stuff they've been doing um for you know a lot of different things are actually 50th anniversary <laughs> i'm 50, so used to saying star 50, wars yeah. 50 and the 50th anniversary lucasfilm um a lot of different Obviously, action figures like that, which has been great. Um, one of those is from the Gaming Greats line, and it's an RC-1138 boss figure from Republic Commando, nice. which looks really, really cool. And Republic Commandos, obviously, are kind of more, more relevant now after Bad Batch mm-hmm. and all this kind of stuff, so it's great to see that. But the kicker here, the oh, one, yeah. brace yourselves. Brace yourselves. We've been talking about him all night, and it's only fair Man to bring this up right now. <laughs> This is one. Get out your pocketbooks. Count all your money. Sell what you need to do to, to get to pre-order this thing. Behold, we have incoming the 50th anniversary George Lucas in Stormtrooper armor action figure. Ah, coming oh, next year. Look at to that. Black Series in 2022. So handsome. Oh. Comes with removable I... helmets and oh. a gun. So this good. is what I've always dreamed of. I've had dreams <laughs> of this, and it's finally come true. And I, but actually, when I when I did see this, I saw it on Twitter, and and I thought it's not April though. It's not April Fool's <laughs> though. Why, why is this Thank here? Goodness. And I genuinely couldn't believe it. I was like, "This is really happening! Oh my god!" <laughs> uh, but yeah, who doesn't want this? It looks so good. He looks so good as a stormtrooper. This is. Awesome. I would have liked. I would have liked a Papanoida. Um, but no, I'll go for a jaw. A <laughs> Just <laughs> paint it blue, and you have a Papanoid. Put him yeah, in. Close. True, true. Yeah, I think it's they. They've made. I feel like Hasbro made us an exclusive for like a convention like many years ago, like twenty years ago or something. George mm-hmm. Lucas action figure like I this. I feel like this isn't the first one quite like no. this. Maybe it was like or- a, it was b- before I was. It's, new articulation though it was like very different right. quality level like this is uh, obviously black series six inch yeah. high quality figure yeah um so yeah great mm. I, I i want it i need it right now i i would love someone to paint do a paint job of this to make it look like the the top pieces look like a flannelette and like yes. do a flannelette, oh, you know someone's like, gonna paint, do that yeah and then paint like see, blue jeans see now and then, the now bottom. that we have oh. the, the the dave filoni uh action figure the uh what's his name <laughs> the uh trapper wolf figure yep. coming out yes yeah now you, got, now you gotta have the set now you gotta trap a wolf and you gotta get stormy stormy george lucas up there yeah. on your shelf I'm, I'm making yeah, room for it right George. now. Juicy George. Juicy George. That's what. That's what you call it. Anyway. I feel. I feel with all the acting that he's done, there's got to be a Ron Howard figure somewhere. Oh, surely. That surely. would be good. Wait, Wait a second. Oh, like, those... I gotta Google that. I gotta Google that. Wait a second. Yeah. Well, maybe like the, the you know those like cinema classic sets, or, or it wouldn't be cinema, but TV. TV I know classic. there is a J.J. Abrams uh, Funko Pop. I know that's a. Thing. Oh yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But is there is there a Richie Cunningham action figure? Is right. that a thing? <laughs> You got to think that that yeah, like was it Happy Days or whatever he was in? Like they, they. Oh, there made... is. I I, I nailed yeah. it. Yeah. So so we got that. We've got a lot of the directors. Oh yeah, and then we got um, Matt mentioning a Happy Hogan uh, figure from, <laughs> from Marvel, yes. John Favreau. That's great. incredible. Incredible. Yep. That's great. So gonna look good. So we got we got a lot of the Star Wars directors as, as action figures. You know, there's not not many left. I just got to get uh, what's it, Richard Edwards. Marquand, Irvin Kershner, Ryan Johnson. It might be Ajax. Johnson. Is yeah, Gareth Edwards. I think. And then Is they go to Mando. I know yes. Funko had a uh, had a uh, a line of filmmaker pops. Yeah. 
Um, so I'm now wondering Surely, if there's like yeah. a. Apparently not. Apparently not. There's still there's still some left. There's still time. We got yeah. time for it. <laughs> yeah. Let's put them all in Stormtrooper. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Every Star Wars director. Let's make the complete set. No, that's super cool. I definitely am wanting to get this one, as yep. a lot of people have mentioned in, in the chat. Uh, all right, moving on. Wow, we have time for, like, the news stories that we usually skip. What is Yeah, this? I didn't think we'd have time for this. Boom, we broke through it. We've got a little bit of time left. We can cover a couple more very interesting stories. Um, Actually, I'm going to save one of these. I know Dominic wanted to talk about one of these, oh, so we'll okay. save it for next week. But I'm going to go on to the next one. And it's none other than Donnie Yen. We were talking about Rogue One earlier. Um, and he says he would, quote, definitely consider returning as Chirrut Imwe in a future mm -hmm. Star Wars project. And it was, he was talking to Loopers a few weeks ago. Um, and uh, apparently he was wearing a Star Wars shirt during his interview, which is very great. That's great. Um, <laughs> and the, the interviewer says, like, I see your shirt. Would you, would you like to? You obviously love Star Wars. And he says, oh, yes, I do. He says, uh, yeah, and uh, obviously all these new Star Wars properties are being announced. Would you ever return as Chirrut? And he says, I would definitely consider it. It's a great, I had a great time shooting Rogue One. I guess people like my character. Yes, people loved your character. Uh, it really depends. You don't know what they're thinking. I leave it up to Disney to sort it out. We'll see. I believe it is destiny. A lot of times what brings people together in one film, it's all about timing and destiny. That sounds like a very Ooh. cheering quote. Very, it's all about yeah, destiny. For destiny. Ooh, yeah. Write that one down, kids. That's <laughs> good. <laughs> no, but it sounds promising. So, I mean, and I think it's always really positive to hear Star Wars actors uh, you know, so with with such enthusiasm, talk about Star Wars and go, you know, would you consider going back to Star Wars? And they go, yeah, Disney, whatever, but I would love to, I would love to. Like it's, it always feels good when we see, you know, a couple of months ago, um, Amelia Clark say similar things like, oh, I'd leave it to Disney right. to decide, but I would love to come back. You know, it's the same sort of thing. Um, you know, it would be fantastic to see that character. And like you said, yeah, that character was really popular. I loved him in Rogue One. I think, you know, I, I, I would have, maybe thought we could have seen some sort of a something of him in Andor, but maybe not because they haven't met yet, obviously. Um, but yeah, it's it's so cool to see Star Wars uh, actors talk so positively about their experiences and think about it in a positive way. It's really good. Yeah, yeah. I he, he's I mean, we saw so little of most of the characters from Rogue One. They were in one movie, mm. then they died. So, <laughs> you know, yeah. there was, you know, it's so great we're going to get more of, of, uh, of Cassian in the Cassian show, but you know, it, mm. it was kind of understood that he was the Rogue One was the origin story of that crew coming together. So it's kind of hard mm. to take a lot of the other characters from Rogue One and have yeah, them be and like, in the in the Andor show because it's like, well, he isn't supposed to doesn't supposed to know them at that point. So mm -hmm. how do you involve them? Do you have yeah. kind of a Game of Thrones thing where you have parallel storylines where characters don't meet till the climax? Like you know, that maybe that could be a way to do it. But I think maybe mm. you might need him to be in other Star Wars projects outside of yeah, Andor. And so I don't know where, where he would show. But um, I'd love to see all of the characters from Rogue One um, fleshed out more and more stuff, especially Jen or so. I'd love to see more Felicity Jones. Oh, yeah. Star Wars. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and she's, she's another one who has said like, yeah, I'll yeah, come back. Like, yeah, she's, she loves she's it. been very vocal about that. And, and like... You wonder about some people. Like I wonder, like Felicity Jones. She's someone who's a huge star. She's in a ton of different things. Like, why would she want to go back to Star Wars? But like, she seemed to genuinely enjoy it, and like, mm -hmm. that's great. I think Jyn Erso is one of those characters. Like, people really latched onto, really loved that character and what mm -hmm. she stood for in that movie, and really was the heart of that movie. And I think any way they could bring her back is thing. And with Chirrut, like, I've always loved the idea of like a movie or series about the Guardians of the Wills. And like yeah. exploring what they were, we got so there's so much stuff packed into Rogue One that like you just get mm. hints at. I would love like a further explanation of what Bays and, and like the whole dynamic between those two and the fact that Bays lost his faith and and he gains it back in Rogue One. It's so thing, yeah. and the fact that those two like clearly love each other, they are inseparable, and they really care about each other. It's there's so much stuff going on there that I would love to see further oh, explained. Yeah. So bring Shirk back, please. Yes, beautiful brom bromance there. Oh, so I'd good. be so down for that. That would be great. All right, we've got a little bit of a sad 
update. Mm. Unfortunately, um, we had heard uh, a while back that uh, Tom Kane, who uh, of course is the uh, voice of Yoda in many projects and uh, Admiral Yularen and the narrator from the those uh, really cool uh, intro reels for the Clone Wars. Um, he had a stroke and uh, his family has announced that he is officially going to be retiring from uh, voice acting due to mm. that stroke. So that's very unfortunate, but they did give an update about that. So this is from a statement um, from his family uh, saying that we've got a new PO box. Our deepest apologies to those of you that sent my dad mail to his LA address since the stroke and it got forwarded back to you. Kind of brings me to the next piece of news. Because of the stroke, my dad has been forced into early retirement. The damage to his speech center is just too severe. He cannot read uh, well nor get out the words he wants, which is sort of required for voice acting. He has what's called apraxia, which means he has difficulty moving smoothly from one sound silver word to another. Uh, groping mm. movements like with his jaw, lips, or tongue to make the correct uh, movements for speech sounds are impaired. Essentially, he knows exactly what he wants to say. He knows exactly what's going on, but the words are trapped in his head. And when they do come out, it's usually too slow to understand. Uh, he has a handful of words he says perfectly, but just a handful. He relies on all forms of nonverbal communication. Now, uh, thank God he's an actor and great at charades. Uh, <laughs> I have so much more to say about this, like how many people miss having conversations with them, especially children and wife, how effed up it is that, um, and it's put second, one of the most talented voice actors ever lost his voice and career. I'll stop here or else I'll cry. And I've already done that like a thousand times this year. Please feel free to send him letters. I'll be managing this PO box. Uh, please add your email or Instagram handle so I can send pictures to you of my dad receiving your mail. He ha also uh, has been practicing his signature and would love to start autographing from home. Thanks for reading this. Please take good care of yourselves. Sam um, at Sam I I came on Instagram for other updates on my dad. I don't read his messages on here. Um, so I think you can get the information about the actual address of that PO box from Sam. Yeah, I Instagram. was just looking. I was just looking at because the the he has a Facebook page where this little message was posted. Um, I think it's his personal Facebook page. Um, but basically, they've been communicating through that. I believe it's public. Maybe that you can actually see what's been posted, and uh, you know, and obviously. Um, but that information is out there. Um, I can't access it for some reason. It's being weird with me. Um, but I've I've heard through several sources that that he's been getting letters and and mm -hmm. doing they're doing autographs mm -hmm. now too so you can send him stuff and he will autograph mm -hmm. it and that's been a, seems to be a thrill for him and a lot of thrill for a lot of people and, and um it's just sad you know it's it's very yeah. it's very heartbreaking to hear the news you know and someone like Tom Kane who has done like look at his filmography he's done so many things so many different voices mm -hmm. just in Star Wars he's done three PO and and Yalaren and 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 Yoda like and not just similar characters like totally different characters and very mm. heartbreaking to hear that you know he's basically lost his voice and, and can't do that anymore um so you know if, if you can look up that PO box um send him a letter send him something to sign because you know it, it's I think it's it's a great thing for him and you know obviously best wishes to them and and hopefully you know he can you know, still enjoy life, even though he's lost that thing mm. that, you know, was such a huge part of it. Um, and, you know, it, there's, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. I, it, it, yeah. it, it is, yeah. it is very, very touchy just to think about, you know, losing him because he's been such a huge part of Star Wars, Star Wars fandom going back. Um, I remember a friend of ours, Dave Bressa, he went to a, I think it was Rhode Island Comic Con. Yep. And got him to autograph a scrubbing bubbles can. <laughs> and because Tom Kane is like, just look up a scrubbing bubbles commercial, you'll see what I mean. Um, Tom Kane was scrubbing bubbles, all this kind of stuff. Like he was that guy who did those commercials. 
Um, <laughs> and that was the big thing back when Clone Wars and First Season started. So that was great and hilarious. And I'm sure Tom King got a kick out of that. But like so many voices. And then you go to museums. I hear his voice everywhere. You walk around Disney Park, you hear his voice. Like Tom King is everywhere. Um, mm-hmm. And his, his, you know, his vocal talents will not soon be forgotten at all. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think it is it is such a beautiful thing of the fandom, this side of it where, you know, this voice actor loses his voice, the one thing he's, you know, giving into the Star Wars story, but, you know, all fans are just going, that doesn't matter, we still, you are so valuable and, like, you know, so just, like, loving on to him. And I think, yeah, it's beautiful this uh, this whole way of, you know, they put out the PO box uh, for fans to, to write into him and make things for him to send. Um yeah, I think it's a it's a beautiful kind of community moment for the fandom to to kind of show their love and appreciation for him. And uh, I will say, I just found the TO box. It's Tom Kang PO Box two three six zero six, Overland Park, Kansas six six two eight three. So, uh, and you can literally just Google if you if you need to find you just Google Tom Kang PO Box. You will find the information. Um, mm. But yeah, yeah, it, yeah def- definitely go, go send him something. Do, go do that. that would, I think that would be a really great thing. Um, so, and, and, and I know it's weird because we always talk about people in memoriam. <laughs> so many mm-hmm. people, you know, think, I'm, I'm glad that Tom Kane's still with us and you can still send him yeah. something. You can still get an autograph of some, some, from something from him. So like, mm-hmm. go do that. Go send him something. Just tell him, you know, I, he, I think a lot of us, he means so much to so many of us. Mm, absolutely. Mm, very good. Well, don't want to end the show on that no, uh it's very sad. Um, yeah, so I want to I want to I want to read um one email. Yeah, that sure. got got sent okay. to us. Um we got Let's a bunch. It. So, um randomly picked one that had a also had a really funny story in it that I that I'd love to read. Um so this is uh from our uh listener Nate. Um Nate so he writes us, hi, it's Nate again. I've got a couple of questions to ask and a few stories to share. I'm going to start off by telling you how I always heard a phrase at the beginning of your show till about a year ago. I would always start to listen to the podcast and I would get past the intro. And then I always heard in my mind, Dominic say, introductions are in order in case you're new to the show or forgot our names <laughs> yes oh yes classic oh I still, I still don't know why i always heard that um but i was listening to the podcast and i got to the part realized what dominic was really saying and i really started laughing in the middle when i was supposed to be <laughs> that's, that's see, see, that's our that's our thing. We're we're trying to get you to laugh in really embarrassing situations, you know, because <laughs> you're listening to podcasts when you shouldn't be. You know, you're in church or something. Yeah. You're like, oh, 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 sorry. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Can you imagine? Oh my gosh! Yeah. yeah. Oh man. <laughs> Why is this communion wine? It should be blue. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not go with the podcast I'm listening to. Communion milk. That's lovely. <laughs> Communion milk, please. We've got uh, Mark Hamill to squeeze it out outside. Oh, the... uh, what's, the, what's the animal? <laughs> what is that called? No, no, but I, I can just before you go on, I, I agree. I know exactly what Nate is talking about, but coming from a third party and not a part of the show, I've always thought this. I'm like, they changed that, didn't they? What did they used to say? What happened there? Yeah. <laughs> you said. If you're new to the show or forgot our names that can i think you change it from that can and does happen and now it's like that can happen is that yeah right? dominic is said it true? a lot and then i said it a couple times i think because i just have like anytime i do an intro i like just dominic in my ear going like say this <laughs> um yeah. so i just i just say what i hear yeah, that's that's that hilarious happen. that's good that's great um, and uh uh, I'm sure. So Nate continues. I'm sure everybody thought I was crazy, but what can you do? Uh, explain that you're listening to a podcast when you're supposed to be studying. Explain that you were laughing at something you had always heard wrong until then, and then have everybody think you're even crazier than before. I I will say my story with that is, as you know, I started watching Star Wars when I was four, so a lot of lines in Star Wars I did not hear correctly. And no, I, me it neither. wasn't until I was an adult that I figured like, wait, oh, they weren't saying that. Like, for example, um, 
the line, several escape pods have been jettisoned. I thought that they said several escape pods of and jettison, capital A. So I thought they were saying that they thought the and. Falcon was an escape pod of a larger ship called and jettison. Wow. I don't know what the word jettison means. That was, was what a four-year-old does not know what the word jettison means. I thought it was means. the name of a ship. <laughs> and jettison. Yeah. I remember, oh, I think I've told this story before on the show, but I, re- I remember specifically for years and years thinking when ha- when they're escaping in the Falcon on Hoth, Han yells at 3PO, hurry up, motor mouth! <laughs> and I even put it in say? a court, I even put it in a quarter of the day and people were like no it's golden rod you idiot i'm like oh okay i guess that makes sense <laughs> that's incredible yeah wow Come yeah on, it's, it's wow. easy to, to to miss here stuff uh wow yeah there's i have probably a lot of, a lot of those yeah there's a, there's a ton there's, there's there's a lot um nick continues about another story uh this night next story might be a little outdated but it involves ihop that these are never outdated uh, I was listening to the episode of the podcast where you guys talk about IHOP for an absurd amount of time, obviously, <laughs> because you guys are hungry. Yeah, that's why. So after, after I was done listening to your guys' crazy conversation where you guys said you would appreciate if we spanned IHOP's Instagram account to get them to partner with you, I came up with this crazy plan to one-up everybody else, find their email and email it into the show. So I tried exactly that. Turns out IHOP doesn't have an official email. So, because they've been trolled by other wow. podcasts, probably. Yeah, all these, all these pesky, pesky podcasters. <laughs> so oh, I did wow. a bit of sleuthing and found a website that claimed it was a hiring website. Oh, oh <laughs> and, no. And on it, I found one of those head employees of IHOP. Underneath his name was a link to get his email, so I clicked on it. It sent me to this thing asking for my email. So I put it in. Then it asked for my email password. I was about to enter my wow. pin when all of a sudden I realized that it was most likely a virus. So, oh my gosh. Wow. I didn't put in my pin and didn't get his email. So if you guys want to risk it, be my guest. I just have one request. If you do, please keep us updated. Um, <laughs> So wow. uh, Nate is very dedicated. Uh, he he almost ruined his computer trying to get. Yeah, iPod. that's yeah. yeah, that's a good wow. That's that's Oof. fascinating. That's absolutely oh, yeah. hilarious. Oh my gosh. Um. Okay. Then finally, he asks his question. <laughs> On to my yes, question. Yes, of the question. Yes. <laughs> On to my yeah, question. Titus. Um. If there was to be a solo two, who would you want it to focus on, Han or Kira? That's that's interesting. I would say I, Kira. I would say Kira. It's not even hard for me. I would say I would say like they kept saying a trilogy. I kept saying like, okay, we're gonna do a trilogy, Han Solo trilogy. I took that as, or at least I want to take that as, it was going to be the first movie was a Han Solo movie. Second movie was maybe a Lando movie. Maybe something focused on Lando. Han would be in it. He would be in force. It would be basically the same cast of characters. But it would be more focused on Lando. And then maybe you get a Kira movie. Mm. And she was going to be a huge part of it. I think that's where you go with that. I think having a character like Kira, she's so fascinating and so deep. I think keeping her in the background is a mistake. I think you, you I think bringing her to the forefront, letting Han still be there, but giving her the focus, I think would be great. So if we were to get a solo two, Maybe someday I want, you know, I think where they're going with the comic books, having her be kind of a first and, you know, front and foremost in that is a great idea. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, yeah, you've got, like, in terms of the actual story, because I think Han could work if it was Han, um, if, like, the story went into how he kind of got into Jabba, you know, in, into dealings with Jabba and Tatooine and starting that kind of relationship. Because when we see him in A New Hope, he's obviously got a really strong relationship with Jabba in the huts. Um, and then, you know, so I think it would explore that kind of storyline. Uh, but I, I think, yeah, personal preference, I agree with you guys. I think Kira has 
uh, a lot of depth of character to her. She's got a lot of interesting things to say and a lot of interesting kind of, you know, especially the the back end of that movie, the last 30 minutes of Solo is super interesting with her kind of angle, the way she takes and the decisions she makes. I think that would make for a very interesting Star Wars story. I think, oh, yeah, I would prefer to see her, I think, that's my opinion. Yeah, so. I, I completely agree. Um, mm. Glad uh, Matthew brings up in the chat that we've got those um, – those, I think, is those comic books coming up with Kira, or those novels, right. yeah, like the Crimson, yeah. Crimson Rain and stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Be, oof, so good. Yeah, so, mm. so, so, I'm glad that that character is is getting some more stories because she definitely deserves it. Absolutely incredible character was set up for so much more, I think, than what we got. So, yeah, absolutely, super, super excited. We have so much Han. There's Han. Han's everywhere. Yeah, Han's Han's everywhere. There's, there's so many be Han good, stories, but we know him. We like, know that you know, guy. Alden's cool. Like, I'm going to be mad if we got more Alden, but um, it, <laughs> Kira's, the, we, there's so much mystery there. We've got to, we've got to get more information yeah. on that. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, I think, I think that's it for this episode. We got to there all the go. news and a, and a listener feedback email as well. So knocked it out. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. So uh, we'll be <laughs> back with another episode uh, next week. Uh, until then, you can follow us on social media at the SWU. Uh, <laughs> ben just put on the top hat for the outro. Uh, oh, ben, thank gosh. you for hosting tonight. Yeah, hey, cheerio, mate. It's been a great time and a lovely <laughs> podcast tonight. Oh, and I uh, really enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, yeah, take a, check out my secret podcast. And uh, yeah, the, uh, this thing is turning me Australian all of a sudden. I've been around this, I've been around this bloke for this long, and it's just turning me Australian. I don't know what happened right now, but uh, yeah, tell me next week, Cheerio. Oh my god, that was like Southern yeah. Cockney Australia. That was like three things. And you were, you were like three Irish. octaves higher too than your normal voice. Oh god, <laughs> that took a lot out of me. There we go. There you <laughs> Oh wait, okay. wait, wait! I think Ben, you've summoned something. You've summoned something. Oh my god! Oh gosh. my god! <laughs> Cheerio, mate. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> oh Just in time god. to thank you for being on the show, Dominic. Thank you, thank you, Dominic, for being on the show. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I couldn't, I couldn't miss it. Uh, is this the end of the show? Is this still going on? <laughs> this is the oh, outro. You came into the, the outro. outro. We're about to... This is the outro. Perfect. Perfect timing. Good. All right. Well, bye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh. <laughs> We are matching though with blue hats. Me and Dom are matching. Yeah, Dominic, I do to, like that. There's something sus going on here. Yeah, there was some question about yeah. whether or not they were the same person. So now, now we know. Because we we never seen on the same screen, but now it's been debunked. <laughs> we're not the same person. I, I, I was signed exactly the same, right? <laughs> no, no, I don't think like, Ken is ever going to be on again 10. after this. this is, oh. What are you guys doing? Oh, mate, I'm done and dusted after this, mate. <laughs> oh, my word. So, Book of Boba oh. Fett, right? We're, you guys haven't talked about that. You were saving that until I got on, right? That's what's, oh, happening. Yeah, That's what's happening here, right? Of course. Of course. I haven't discussed you know the biggest it. news all week, right? No. That Save amazing trailer for last. we got. <laughs> <laughs> the amazing trailer, Book of Boba Fett. Yeah, did you see the trailer? We, we, did you miss it? Oh yeah, he's just yeah. sitting on the chair the whole time. I loved he doesn't it. move. <laughs> the stoic, just power. Oh, that's so good. All right, well, so so good. You guys have a show to finish. So I should probably go. <laughs> All right, thank you, thank you, Dom, for, <laughs> thank, you. Thank, you for thank you for your thoughts. Thank you. Thank you for your thoughts and theories, Dom. Appreciate it. Oh, yeah. that was J twenty five. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my Bye. goodness. Yeah, Good, night. Bye. Good night. Oh my. <laughs> Good night. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Brilliant. Right. I think I was about to say follow at Ben Hart with Noe on social media for more insane insanity. Um, oh yeah. And follow me at Seek3PO and Hannah. You're thank calling you so me much. insane, mate. <laughs> I don't even know what country that is. Oh. What is happening? Um, oh. Hannah, I think you're bloody mad yourself, mate. 
Um, Mate. Oh. Anna, thank you for being on our podcast for the last time ever. Oh, yeah, I would the last time. That's fucked up. No, it's always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Always so much fun and chatting with you guys. So many theories and interesting conversations happen. Um, and I'm going to plug Star Wars Culture here if yes. you, if I'm going to do that here. Uh, yeah, Star Wars Culture, hop on over to our YouTube. Uh, we got a bunch of videos coming out. Uh, we go live every Wednesday at 5 p.m. Pacific. I feel like that's the time, but my Australian brain can never that convert it. Yes, it. nailed it. Nailed it. Um, we, we're, we're live every Wednesday, so come over, talk about Star Wars. We just have a fun time chatting about whatever is going on in the Star Wars galaxy. Uh, me and Jordan have a great time. So, yeah, Star Wars Culture. Um, check out our YouTube channel for that. Yes. That's right. And yeah. Yeah. My Instagram and Twitter on, at Pan the Race Side. I just post Star Wars memes all day, every day, just talking, talking Star Wars. Awesome. And uh, of course, uh, don't forget um, that uh, you can support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash the SWU. That is where you can get our pre shows. Um, don't forget to uh, check out our merch over at tpublic slash user slash the Star Wars Underworld. Um, and then if you're watching on YouTube, please. Uh, <laughs> Chad's confused because I'm doing things out of order. My bad. <laughs> I'm not looking at the notes. I'm just trying to end the show. <laughs> um, <laughs> if you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe. Leave a like. I'm trying to get to 1,000 subscribers. If you're not watching on YouTube, head over there and just give us a sub. That would help us out a lot. And of course, if you found our show on YouTube um, and for some reason you want to watch it anywhere else, you can't, but you can listen to it on Spotify and Apple Podcasts and all those other places. If it's more convenient for you, uh, just search for Star Wars Underworld. You'll find all that stuff over there. And especially on Apple Podcasts, please leave a review if you can, because we got some crazy reviews that need to be offset by some good ones. So that would be super, super awesome. Um, so that's it. We'll be back with another show next week until then for ben for dominic for our awesome producer chad and for hannah my name is chris and may the force be with you it's a wrap <laughs>